once you embed this position into your body mechanics, then it, it infiltrates all of your training and it becomes a fantastic habit. Hey, Mitch here. Today we're going to talk about bracing, framing, and cramming. So let's begin by discussing the fundamentals of what we mean by bracing and framing. So, first of all, when you create a brace, it generally looks like this. And so you will use the attacking part of the arm, and then you will cram off of this brace. Now, when we fight with a cane, by the way, it's the same thing, except we use the cane in this fashion, and that's a bracing strike when we strike with the cane in this fashion. But when we get into this bracing position, and then we try to get an attacker off of us, we will typically put this bone right here, and we'll put it on the mouth or in the nose, right in the center of the face, and then we push them back. Now the way to get a good strike off of that is to practice it. And what you should do is get into your position, and then get accustomed to this frame, and then bang, and then get used to really striking off of that brace position. Now, when you're wrestling, then you use the same position to create a frame for getting someone off of you when you're wrestling. So what does that look like? Well, let's go look at that, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to strike off of this brace. And we'll talk about knives, and we'll talk about tomahawks. Uh, the floor is not normally this wet. We're having a little rain, and I haven't quite uh, dried in the cabin. So uh, I've got a tarp over it, but the, the drips are still coming in. So that's the reason why everything is wet at the moment. So just bear with me. Okay, so when you're wrestling, now this, I have the bag now in bottom scissors. There's no way to fully simulate the bag being uh, having legs and being in top saddle. But imagine that this is a person and their legs are here and uh, they're in top saddle position. Now, if I want to get them off, I have to create a frame. It's going to look just like the one we did up there. The difference is only that we're trying to keep them at bay and we're going to put our hand against their hips right here and then what we're going to do is keep this elbow close to the body if it's out here you're using just your tricep but you want to block it with the bone once it's here it's very hard to move this arm you're not going to push them off they're too big and they're too heavy for that you're going to frame them out now if the person was really here then this would be closer okay i'm just putting here as a vague simulation it's not a real simulation so you would put this arm here and now you have a true frame this is blocked this is blocked and that hips those hips are not going to approach you once you have that position framed then you would shrimp away using this foot and then this foot comes up in the air and this one pushes and then you're going to come out here and then get your knee up with their leg back here and then now you will leave your foot hooked and that gives you an elevator okay now once you have an elevator then you can begin to work you can either reframe on this side and get the other leg out or you can begin to lift here grab arms and begin to roll you can begin to work and elevate and so on The frame is the frame is the frame. So we don't want to frame like this where we're using all tricep. We want to frame so that we have good, nice, square frames that really work. And if you understand how square choke works, then you understand that, that there, is a, there is a different frame when you pull and when you push. But in either case, 
elbows need to be tight and square. That's why it's called a square choke, and it's called a frame because it's a frame. It's not called an X. That's not it at all. It's a frame. Okay, now, if you like, you can reverse this and go into this position, and then you can throw elbows off of this. Now, you see how this is? So the hand will move into this position, and then if you want to strike elbow off of it, then you pull with your left, and then, and what this does is creates a nice frame against strikes. Now, the last video was about vertical elbow and how to strike up the center, and so when a person is instinctively, their hands go up, it makes a pipe up the center. And so I'm not a big fan of the elbow in this direction. I'm more of a fan of the elbow that goes up, that goes in this direction, or the elbow that comes down in this direction. But there might be some utility in throwing a horizontal elbow out of a frame or out of a brace. And I prefer to pull it down and then get that strike to be a little more as close to vertical as possible. So again, cram, cram, bang, bang, bang. When you do it, then roll your grip. You need to get in the habit of doing that. Why do you need to get into the habit of switching your grip when you go from side to side? Well, if you know what a crossbody clinch is, then you don't need to ask that question. If you don't know what a crossbody clinch is, then you need to sign up for the Heritage Self-Defense Distance Learning Program, and then I will teach you that, or you can just crawl through the YouTube history and try to find crossbody clinch. Look, I'm trying to get people to join the distance learning program or show up for classes here in Richmond, Virginia. So, sue me. Now, you get into this position. Again, you do your brace. You create a cram. You don't just push. You need to strike with your cram towards the center of the face. If you want an elbow off of it, you can do what's called a steam donkey. And you do that by pulling one hand down here, and then you switch your grip. Did you see that? I'm showing it to you to get my body out of the way. And then bang on this side, switch again, bang, switch again, bang, and you do that quickly. And this keeps, this swimming motion creates a frame, and this frame protects you from strikes. Now, I told you I was going to talk a little bit about knives and tomahawks. Similar forces are at play. So if you have your weapon in your hand, let's say you have your knife or your tomahawk in hand, and the person is too close, then you're going to have to do a push cut. And so the same thing is in play. You don't want the knife to be pressed into you, so you want to create a good square frame, and that's how you do your push cut. If they're too close, you, you can't reposition and get the knife in play, then you create a good square frame, and then the same way that you used your cram with your forearm, then you'll use your push cut, and you'll shove, bang, bang, and then that does the same thing. Or if you have your tomahawk, then you can employ your tomahawk in a similar fashion. If they're too close, you can take the tomahawk in your hand, you can rack down with it, you can brace with the center of the tomahawk, but that's risky because you're banging your knuckles. It's better to put your palm behind the head and then practice that. More videos will come on that down the pike, but you can see what's at play. Framing, bracing, try them out, but I think it's a great idea to habituate this. Now, also, if you should see this body mechanic, will also come into play when you do your
scarf holds. As they change sides, you can run with them and stay with that using a very similar body mechanic. Once you embed this position into your body mechanics, then it, it infiltrates all of your training and it becomes a fantastic habit. As Mark Hatmaker says, martial arts are very much like driving skills. You don't obsess about fighting. You habituate good habits in the same way that you habituate clicking your seat belt when you get in the car, checking the lights, looking at the gauges. These are just things that you habituate. If you habituate those habits, you don't have to be paranoid when you drive. If you habituate brushing your teeth, you don't have to be paranoid about cavities. And if you habituate good fighting habits, then you don't need to be paranoid about self-defense. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.